Hello, YouTube. First, I was alerted to this by a brief report in the Russian media. So then I searched for more information on the internet. And here's what I found. A certain paper was published in the Chinese academic journal Acta Optica Sinica on February 22nd, 2024. The paper says that if abnormalities are detected there is a system that will send alarm signals and initiate appropriate response measures. So what's going on is that the People's Republic of China plans to establish all-seeing surveillance on the moon after drawing on the successes of, of the past uh, space exploration exploits and the successes actually of the system that they have that it says will ensure the security of its forthcoming lunar base. So China plans to bring the largest surveillance camera network on Earth to the moon to protect its lunar assets. And um, the Chinese Aerospace Agency outlined how 600 million camera Skynet inspire a system to watch lunar assets and track foreign visitors to the moon. Agencies behind the projects, this project, say that the lessons of Skynet will inform how they build and operate the optical surveillance system for China's lunar research station. Skynet, or Tianwen, is the world's largest video surveillance network with more than 600 million cameras averaging one camera for every two adult Chinese citizens and covering virtually every location of the country. The construction and operation of the optical surveillance system for the Lunar Research st Station, which is supposed to be international in the future, can draw on the successful experience of China's Skynet project uh, the Lunar Exploration and Space Engineering Center of the China National Space Administration, CN CNSA, abbreviated. That's what they said in the paper that was published in that journal, Acta Optica Sinica. It's a Chinese academic journal. The co-authoring organizations, which also include the Chinese Academy of Sciences, uh, the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation and the Zhejiang University. They're the main agencies that manage and execute China's lunar program and play a major role in setting technical standards. Look at my videos um, in the playlist, The Dragon Has Risen. I believe that's what it's called. You'll find it in my channel to find more about China's lunar program and achievements. China's lunar version of Skynet will, comp will comprise a large number of high-performance security cameras operating in visible light or infrared zones. These cameras, mostly weighing just 100 grams, 3.5 ounces each, will be equipped with AI-driven chips capable of identifying, locating, tracking and aiming at suspicious targets independently, according to the paper. It said that if abnormalities were detected, the system would promptly generate alarm signals and initiate appropriate response measures. The paper did not specify what those measures might be, but you can guess. After arriving on the moon in batches, the cameras would automatically connect to each other, achieving seamless coverage of the station area, according to the paper. The proposed lunar research station with a radius more than uh, 3.7 miles or 6 kilometers is a sprawling complex and it's apparently it's larger as reportedly than a Disney theme park. It will house a power station, a communication car, hub, a command center, scientific facilities, and a fleet of robots. It's getting better and better. You remember science fiction movies of the past? Well, listen more. The station will even have its own satellite 
its own satellites for remote sensing, navigation, and communication. To ensure its long-term stability and safety, the decision makers say a robust monitoring system is a must and say certain critical zones may even require continuous 360-degree surveillance for events such as the arrival and departure of spacecraft carrying international astronauts the system could provide multi-camera high definition live streams to earth the author said this would not only improve the station's operational efficiency but also solidify china's position as a leading space power but the vast amount of data generated by the cameras will test its bandwidth and data processing abilities. To overcome these obstacles or hurdles, Chinese scientists and engineers are leaning on their experience with the terrestrial Skynet project, where they have developed advanced technologies for efficient data transmission and processing under constrained bandwidth. Despite the controversial namesake, that uh, ominous AI from the certain movie franchise, which you can guess, I don't know if I can name it, the Skynet system is rooted in an ancient Chinese proverb that embodies the principle of omnipresent justice. There is forever a net in the sky with large mesh, but letting nothing through, the proverb goes. It means that the law is all seeing and the wrongdoers will eventually face punishment. Bringing Skynet to the moon will not be an easy task. According to the CNSA requirements, a lunar surveillance camera must have a minimum lifespan of 10 years. During that time, they must withstand the onslaught of high-energy particles in the space environment while functioning across extreme temperature fluctuations from above 100 degrees Celsius during lunar days to as low as minus 180 Celsius during lunar nights. Despite their compact size, the lunar cameras are expected to perform myriad tasks, including capturing both distant and wide-angle views, and they must be able to self-adjust and operate independently if communication with Earth is lost. The Chinese space authorities hope leading Chinese technology companies, including smartphone manufacturers, can help research and develop a surveillance system whose challenges include lens design, chip technology, protective materials, optical systems, communication protocols, and AI artificial intelligence algorithms. The lunar Skynet must also be fortified against potential external threats, whether from other nations or terrorist organizations with security standards that may exceed those for terrestrial system, ensuring confidential communication between the various optical detection terminals and the central control hub represents a significant engineering hurdle, according to the authors in that paper. The encryption techniques employed for signal transmission and streaming media must be resilient against the interference caused by the intense electromagnetic radiation prevalent in deep space. The data must not be damaged or stolen, according to the paper. It underscored the need to establish a new set of standards tailored to the unique operational demands of deep space missions, thereby ensuring the integrity and security of mass-produced optical surveillance terminals in the new lunar race or moon race. Both China and the United States have outlined plans to establish international bases at the moon's south pole. They are envisioned as the cornerstones of future lunar exploration efforts and participation from other nations is being sought. I would say Russia is where China goes, but you know, Russia is, is worried itself too, I'm sure, as is India. Anyway, 
Scientific speculation suggests water ice exists in the permanently shadowed craters of the lunar south pole. However, the limited and potentially concentrated nature of these water resources has led to concerns they may become the focus of competition and potential conflict among spacefaring nations. Published research and discussions at international academic forums highlight the possibility that the Chinese and American lunar bases may be near each other, potentially even sharing the same crater. International law prohibits the deployment of weapons on the lunar surface, and both China and the United States have reiterated that their lunar exploration programs are strictly peaceful in nature. However, the lack of a clear regulatory framework governing potential differences and conflicts between the two camps remains a significant concern. And once again, don't forget India and Russia. I got to tell you something. When in my youth in the Soviet Union, when we could get our hands, young people, and not only young, on translations of American science fiction, and we usually got them at the black markets because the Soviets, they published, but not a lot. So to have a book like that was like like a prize. We read anything we could read. I mean, it was like a breath, you know, like fresh air. And um, we loved it. And I, years later, I was able to read a very cool book about... Uh, Humans on the Moon, a very interesting book, not an unusual one. The Cat Who Walks Through the Walls, I believe Robert Heinlein is the author. And it has some cool stuff going on on the moon, but this is, this is a very interesting book. Anyway, this is what I wanted to let you know. And um, I'll bring you more information about space exploration, uh, secrets of Soviet and Russian cosmonauts, and the things they experience in the outer space, and uh, what it does to human body and mind, and of course UFOs and USOs, not that there are any USOs in outer space, unless we get to the planets that have water, that have oceans in them, and we'll get to that point. Um, If you like my research, please support me through the links you'll find in the description to this channel. Please tell others about my videos, please like them, And like I said, I'll bring you more stuff in the future. Thank you for your attention to my work.